Salufa and good morning. Welcome to all of our visitors. Thank you for choosing to gather with us this morning uh, to worship our Father in heaven in spirit and in truth. Uh, you could be anywhere on this island and enjoying your vacation, but we know that, that you put God first and you will not go on vacation from him. And so you being here is an encouragement uh, to our congregation. Uh, good to see our church family here this morning, all of you. Uh, some great news this, this past week. Um, been studying with uh, the Bell Ohana. Um, and uh, this past Friday, they, they were all, uh, well, three of them. Jewel was already baptized, and she, she helped bring her family to Jesus. But on Friday, um, Dad, Jeremy, and Mom, uh, Ellie, and her sister, uh, Layla, were all baptized into Christ. And, and uh, I'm still kind of riding that spiritual high, if you will, uh, to this morning. And so very encouraging to my soul. Uh, I got to uh, play some basketball with them and, or with Jeremy, uh, ate some wonderful meals at their home, and uh, had some good laughs and shared the word of God as well. And so uh, this morning after, before our closing prayer, we're, we're going to have a, in our tradition as a church, we call it an aloha circle. And this morning, we're going to welcome the Bell family, uh, Formosa, who was baptized last week, Sunday um, as well. And then uh, Tina, uh, uh, who's visiting uh, with, with us. Well, you decided to live here in Hawaii. Uh, that's uh, uh, Brittany's mom. And then Tara Johnson have decided uh, to place membership as well with us this morning. So, so if I mention your names and the Bell family, if I mention your names, so right after the, the sermon and the song and before the closing prayer, we're going to have a Aloha circle. And then everyone that I just mentioned, if you could come to the front and, and uh, we'll greet you and, and welcome you uh, uh, to God's family. You are already part of God's family, but that's our little tradition. Some traditions are good, and that's one of them, uh, our Aloha Circle. Open your Bibles to the psalm that was just read for us uh, by Christian, because this is where we launch in our study of God's Word this morning. A sermon is titled, God Values You. All right, God values you. I made it a, a point to, to preach a sermon like this once or twice a year because every now and then we go through life and things happen to us that make us question our worth or make us question, am I really important to the people that are around me? Am I really valuable? What is my value? Right? Things can happen in life. Uh, sometimes, and and this can come from the people that that are supposed to love us, right? Some sometimes people we know will say the the most hurtful things, like "You're no use to me," or "You're no good in this family," or or, or whatever the line of thought may be that puts you in a state that make you wonder, "Am I important?" Am I valuable? Do someone, does someone really care that I exist? Right? And I want to tell you this morning that God values you. If the whole world says no, if the whole world calls you, you know, unworthy or worthless, don't believe that. Right? And I'm going to show you this morning how much God values you. Go to the psalm there. I'd like for us to read it again. Um, sometimes we'll hear it. Sometimes we'll read it. Even after this sermon, I encourage you to read this psalm often. 
because there might be the, some things that don't occur to you now or that haven't occurred to you yet from the reading of this psalm. And so David, we don't know the place and the time period in his life. But we know David has a heart for God, right? That, that was the inspired description of him in, about his life. He is a man after God's own heart. But even in David's walk, there were times that were quite challenging that would have caused David to question. And it's not wrong to question. So I don't know the time, whether it was a bad time or a good time, we don't know. But what we can deduce from the words of the Psalms, of this Psalm, is David is praising God and in a positive way, He's thinking, wow, all of this you made. And then there's me. <laughs> all of this, God, you created. And then here's mankind. Let's read it. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory Above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies and that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? You have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Right, the psalmist looks around and with his naked eye, the kind of eyes we have, right? He looks at the sun. He looks at the stars. I don't know where he's at at this point, but the idea is he's bringing to mind everything that God has made that his eyes have seen. And also in his mind, he has measured himself in a comparative way. He's, he's compared himself to all that God has created. And so he asked the question, I consider your heavens, the things you made, the sun, the moon, the stars. Man is so small compared to some of the things you've made. So what is man? What is man that you're mindful of him? The first thought that I want to bring forth to our minds concerning how God values you is this. God made a universe for you. There's a sense that everything God created was for his glory and rightly so. Man was made in the image of God. In the image of God, he made him Male and female, he made them for his glory. But if you think about it, this creation was also made for you. 
the stars and the moon and the fish, everything that surround us, God made it for you. One, he made it for you because it reminds you that he is there. That's what the psalmist said in Psalm 19, verse 1 and verse 2. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech. Night unto night reveals knowledge. Reveals knowledge to whom? Shows his praise and glory to who? To us. Man was not made for the universe. The universe was made for man. And you think about that. You can't put a value on what God made. But through what he made, he shows us that he values us. The psalmist says, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moons, the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man, that you visit him? Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you paused to examine the work of God's hands? When was the last time you paused and say, wow, how beautiful the sunrise, the sunset. Some of you went on a hike this week and you got to appreciate, you know, some, some uh, inclines and some declines. Get your heart rate up a little bit. Breathe in some fresh air. Sometimes we need to pause and just look at what he's made and be thankful because he made it for you. He made it for us. I want to show you a video. And this video kind of drives home the point for me here. And I want to, I'll explain that later. But here, here's a, a video of comparing our earth and our son, which is what David would have seen. He, 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 would have, he would have seen what the earth is like. In no way he had the technology to see the circle of the earth. He didn't get to see that. He would have been amazed to see that. In no way he could see what's beyond the sun. We have that capability today. We're blessed to be able to send someone out or a satellite out and look at the earth and even go beyond the earth. And so I want to help you see beyond what your naked eyes could see. Just appreciate how valuable we are to God. You could fit a million earths inside the sun. It's over a million kilometers in diameter. Yet our sun is tiny compared to the really big stars out there. Eta Carinae, over five million times larger than our sun. Betelgeuse, 300 times larger than Eta Carinae. If it was our sun, it would reach as far out as Jupiter. And then there's this monster, V.Y. Canis Majoris, the largest star ever discovered, a billion times bigger than our sun. That's about a nine-year-old video. They have discovered some stars larger than the largest showed in this video. Well, just picture again in your mind what the psalmist is saying, right? Our earth compared to the sun. You can fit a million earths in the sun. And then our sun compared to these super giants. Very small. And then you compare 
to the things that God has created beyond our reach and our discovery. And the psalmist says, when I consider your heavens, the things you made, who am I? That you are mindful of me. Who are we? He values us. Made in his image. According to his likeness. Don't let people walk away. Telling you that you are not valuable. God made a universe. For you. To point you to him. Yes, compared to some of the things he made, <laughs> we are no match. Our entire universe is no match to that big star. You fit our entire galaxy in one of those stars. But yet God, in this vast universe we existed in, he's concerned for the human soul living on earth. Number two, to tell you that God values you, he will care and provide for you. Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter six. In the Sermon on a Mountain, in a time in the first century when you know, the dollar was not like our dollar. The monies were, society was nowhere close to what we have today. And so the very basic necessities of life, they will have to work for it. They have to work for clothing. They have to work for food. The, the basic necessities of life that we casually appreciate and sometimes don't appreciate that we have clothes on, that we have a roof over our heads, that we, we have cars and monies and all the things that, that we have. Here's what Jesus said in that sermon. And in this part of the sermon, he again highlights how valuable we are to God. All right. Jesus said, beginning, beginning in uh, verse 24, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. All right, some translations say, cannot serve God and money. You got to pick one. I'll tell you, one has everything. The other only has money. <laughs> All right. Here's what Jesus said. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Oh, but, but Lord, often that's all we worry about is our life. He says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat and what you will drink. Right now, maybe some of us are thinking, what will be for lunch? What will be for dinner tomorrow? And these are the things that are constantly on our minds. Come home from work, husband, you might be saying, What's for dinner? All right, you live in our home, leftovers. Leftovers are good. He, he continues on, don't worry about your life, what you will eat and what you will drink, nor your body, what you will put on. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. So like the psalmist, but Jesus points his audience Let's look at what God made again. All right. He says, look at the birds of the air. For they, 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 they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Here's the question. Are you not of more value than they? What's the answer to that question, church? Are we not more valuable than the birds of the field? Yes, we are more valuable. What's the point? If God feeds the birds, he'll feed you. 
All right, that's, that's his point. He continues on. He, he says, which of you by worrying add a cupid to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. But yet I say that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Right? Don't worry about your clothes. Look at the flowers. The flowers are dressed up more beautiful than the richest man who ever lived. Solomon. Right? He might make an argument today for Elon Musk. I don't know. Solomon is rich in a lot of ways. He had wisdom like no other. Second only to Jesus. And yet Jesus said, the flowers of the field, not even the purple and fine linen of King Solomon can come to be compared. And so he's, he says, I went to the wrong chapter now in my Bible. He says, now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, of you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. The next time you worry about what you need, you got to remember, God knows what I need. But if I will pursue him, he will provide. Try it. If I will put him first, he will give me what I need. So verse 33, Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself, about its own things, sufficient for the day, it's its own trouble god values you one because he made a universe for you two he's told us that he will provide for us so long as we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness last but not least if this doesn't tell you that God values you, nothing will tell you that he values you. God became a man so that he could die for you. The supreme creator chose to be one of us in order to save us. John's gospel tells us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. God looks down from heaven sees his people without a shepherd, decided, I am going to be like one of them. To lead them, to win them back to me. Bible says, and the word Word that was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Your eyes did not behold that glory. Your eyes did not see 
grace and truth walk on this earth. You by faith accept that as truth. You remember Thomas, <laughs> Thomas wanted the evidence. He had heard that Jesus came back from the dead. Thomas said, I, I will not believe unless I touch him. Jesus appears to him and said, Thomas, reach your hand here. Touch me. When Thomas felt where the nails were and the side that was pierced, he made a great confession. He said, my Lord, my God. And then Jesus said this. Thomas, you believed because you have touched, because you've seen me. Blessed are those who do not touch and have seen me, but they believed in me. That's all of us. We believed in the word about Jesus, about God becoming man to die for us. And that doesn't tell me that God values me. Nothing else will. Bible says, for God so loved the world. The greatest form for the word love in the Greek language, a kapao, a kape. To love in such a way that your love uh, is, is for the best thing possible for the object being loved. God says here, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I like the way Paul reasoned with the Romans because Paul, Paul, Paul understood what it means to be a martyr. The Christians of the first century understood the idea of dying for another person. And I love the way he, he puts it. He uses that idea to help them appreciate. Listen, while you was enemy of God, his son died for you. Right? He, he says here, he says, for when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And then he says this, for scarcely for a righteous man, one will die. In other words, this doesn't happen often. It's fewer times that someone would die for another person, for a good man, they would give their life. That, that, that seldom, it hardly happens. And then he says, Yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. Some may say, I would die for you. And you won't know it until it comes to that point. Maybe some have said, I would die for you. And then they didn't. And then he said this. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. In that where, while we were still sinners, you know what diminished us in our value? Sin. Sin. Because sin made us enemies of God. And only in that sense is our value diminished. We have become enemies of God. God didn't have to die on the cross. If God was to do things this way, and you know, I'm just saying this as a scenario. If, if God was to say, you know what? This world has sinned against me. It is time for me to exercise my judgment. If God was to judge the world, and not send his son, all of us will perish. And so while we were in the state deserving to perish, God became a man and died for us. And Paul says here, that is the demonstration of his love 
the greatest being ever loves you, came to this earth and died for you. God values you. He values you because we see that he made a universe for you, a universe that tells you that he exists. God values you because he has promised in his word, if you will seek me first and my kingdom, all these things will be added unto you. God values you because he paid the ultimate price to save you. Here's a question or a thought. The God who values you, maybe you're here this morning, you're not yet a Christian. God who values you wants you to be saved. He wants you to be in Christ Jesus because that's where your true value is. It is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To be saved, you need to hear the word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17. You need to believe Jesus is the son of God. Like we just read in John 8, 8, 24, John 3, 16. John 8, 24 tells us that Jesus speaking to these Jews who didn't believe in him, he says to them, you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, I'm God, you will die in your sins. All right, so one must believe or he or she will die. You need to repent of all sins. Jesus said, I tell you no, but except you repent, you will likewise perish. You need to confess he is the son of God. Romans 10, 10, with the heart one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you made that great confession, you need to be baptized as according to the scriptures. Peter to an audience that said, what shall we do to be saved? Peter says, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you have been baptized into Christ, you need to live your life faithfully each day. Know that he values you. And that you are valuable to him. And the question often that I want to leave you with is this. How much do you value God? How much do you value God? This morning, if you need to re re respond to the invitation to be baptized into Christ, or maybe you need prayers for encouragement, this is an opportunity for you. We extend this invitation. Come forward as we stand and sing the song of encouragement.